transmission of airwaves, the T-45 trainer takes flight using a biofuel blend. Plus, cargo teams visit USS Eisenhower to take the load off the fleet. And former flight director of Apollo 13 shares an important message about teamwork. We're navigating the news of NAVAIR. Welcome to this edition of Airwaves. I'm Michael Crew. I'm Command Mass Chief Brett Joel. Thank you for joining us. It's been a busy summer for biofuel testing at Naval Air Station Patuxent River. The T-45 Trainer, EA-6B Prowler, and the AV-8B Harrier are the latest aircraft to fly using a biofuel blend. The biofuel is a 50-50 mixture of JP-5 jet fuel and oil from a camelina seed. This type of drop-in replacement fuel will help to decrease military dependence on foreign oil. Previous aircraft tested include the F-18, MH-60, and the MV-22. The Blue Angels performed using the biofuel blend during the Air Expo at Naval Air Station Patuxent River. If you would like to learn more about the Blue Angel biofuel flight, visit the NAVAIR website at www.navair.navy.mil. It was a day out of the office for the cargo team from Patuxent River. A visit to USS Eisenhower helped them to see firsthand how to better serve the fleet. The C-2 performs a carrier onboard delivery mission brings all the supplies for, for the fleet when they're at sea to, to and from the carrier group. Our primary purpose here at a, as a C-2 crewman is to provide logistic support to the aircraft carrier and their uh, strike group. What that means is just bringing out people for the carrier to either transport them to the other small boys or we bring out cargo. The, the cargo handling system on the C-2 is, is very limited. Most of the cargo is, is hauled in with just the strength of the crew. We're down here to get lessons learned from the community, from the maintenance officers, and from the fleet to see if we can pick up any uh, maintenance or design improvements for the uh, C-2 aircraft. Um, I'm looking at the seats. There's some complaints about the seats. We've got to do some improvements, make them easier for the crew to load, make them more passenger friendly, make them easier and more efficient for the crewmen to change around and get them in the aircraft as quickly as possible. One of the things about, about the C-2 Greyhound is that it has unique restraint requirements because the aircraft has to be able to trap when it lands on the aircraft carrier and the catapult as it takes off. It puts the stress on the cargo, it puts the stress on the seats, and it puts the stress on the feet and on the seat tracks. So you'll be able to see that today. You'll be able to experience it firsthand, but you won't understand the depth of it here at Home Guard. Not until you get bigger underways where you'll see the boat out for three to four weeks when they actually start needing refrigerators, when they start needing AC units, they, when they start needing all those major parts that don't come from a one-week stint. Coming down here and talking to the maintainers and the fleet guys is essential to our mission. So we read with these reports of Nav Air, but the more time we get to spend with him and interface and interact and get the day-to-day -day communication and operations of what they're doing is a great influence and improvement on our um, ability up in Nav Air. Inspiring words from NASA hero Gene Krantz. The former NASA flight director came to Patuxent River to share his experiences in mission control. Krantz led the ground crew during the Apollo 13 mission. His team was on duty when part of the spacecraft's service module exploded, putting the crew's lives at risk. Krantz says cooperation and quick thinking helped to bring the astronauts safely home. So this is the story of Apollo 13, story of mission control, but it's the story of a team of young people just like yourselves. People united through teamwork and values and good leadership. And a lot of time it's, you're asked what are the real key, and it was really the relationship, the trust that existed between the ground team and the crew on the spacecraft, because without that we would have never made it. Krantz was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom for his role in the Apollo 13 mission. He retired from NASA in 1994. It was a summer full of learning for middle school students in China Lake. The China Lake Museum Foundation teamed up with Knock WD to host a summer science camp. Engineers volunteered their time to teach students about rocketry and aviation. The students learned about aircraft flight through hands-on experiments and field trips to Naval Air Station China Lake. We want to show them that it is not a stretch from where they are in fifth and sixth grade to be able to become a scientist or engineer. Uh, those scientists and engineers bring with them a wealth of experience that we apply to experiments on flight sciences, both aircraft flight sciences and uh, rocketry flight sciences. I think it's important to excite young kids at this age about science, engineering, and math. 
because it's at this point in time where most of them don't know what it is they want to do. And if you can make the things that many of them think are too hard and boring, if you can make it fun, then you have a chance of basically inspiring them to, to go on to careers in, uh, in science and engineering. This is the second year for the summer science program. That's it for this edition of Airways. See you on the flight line.